Okay. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Mark Zuckerberg, who is the 25-year-old um, inventor of Facebook, and uh, how I'm going to give a brief overview of how it, he, how it came to be, and then a uh, history of his, of his life, and then how I see it as operating within the new media landscape that we're experiencing in the 21st century. Um, Zuckerberg proved his tech savvy well, well before he ever invented Facebook. In sixth grade, he bought his first PC and bought a computer programming guide for dummies and taught himself how to write computer programs, um, which is impressive. By ninth grade, he had written a computerized version of the game Risk um, in class at school. And by 12th grade, um, he and fellow uh, schoolmate Adam D'Angelo created Synapse. Uh, this was at Philip Xeter's Academy, which is a prep school. And Synapse did really well. It was a, um, basically like a website, it was like a music media website. I think you could download music off of it. And uh, seven months after its September 2002 release, it was featured on Slashdot.org, which is a tech uh, magazine, magazine website. And it was fending off calls from Winamp, Windows Media Player, Mood Logic, Music Match. And the two of them were offered at one point $950,000 to work for three years for a company um, that wanted them to like, help develop it. And they turned it down and said they wanted to go to college. Uh, and so Zuckerberg attended Harvard. That's him. Um, <laughs> where he became uh, notorious for creating facemash.com. Uh, this was a website that allowed Harvard students to compare pictures of fellow classmates side by side and rank them according to who looked better. Uh, he's kind of made a reputation for himself for being a jerk. Uh, and basically, a girl had rejected him, and then he went and got drunk in his dorm room alone and made this. Uh, so he was indicted and brought before the Academic Disciplinary Committee. Um, but before that happened, the site had Within hours, like four hours, it had 22,000 views and 450 members from the school. Uh, so after they shut it down, uh, the Harvard Crimson ran an editorial kind of discussing it. Uh, and within the editorial, a professor remarked, the technology needed to create a centralized website is readily available. Zuckerberg watched this, and ironically, that actually spurred his thinking. And he's like, I could probably do a lot more with this uh, databasing uh, with people's profiles um, than just ranking them. And so they made Facebook. Uh, launched February 4th of 2004. This would have been his second semester of his sophomore year. Um, and that's, he only did two years at Harvard. He dropped out. Uh, by spring of 2004, had 200,000 users at 30 schools. Started Ivy League and then progressed to state schools and then beyond. By December of 2004, <coughs> 10 months after it was launched, uh, had 1 million users nationwide. And it hasn't stopped growing ever since. So Facebook today, as of March 2009, uh, there's over 200 million users growing at a rate of 1 million new members each day, which is amazing. And the company itself is valued at $15 billion. Uh, Zuckerberg is valued at $5 billion. Uh, and, but th that's just kind of an estimate because the company hasn't gone public yet. Uh, so Microsoft invested in the company. Um, at one point, he actually turned down a billion dollars from Yahoo to run the company himself. And so it's valued at 15 billion. All right. Uh, and this is just a, this is a clip, it's very short, uh, by a guy named Clay Shirky, who is a technology media specialist. And he's talking about the, the new uh, social media that's emerging. And he just, he just says something that's kind of interesting. the idea that we're all in this together. And so we're starting to see a media landscape in which innovation is happening everywhere and moving from one spot to another. That is a huge oh, transformation, he says. Uh, so the key here is that media is increasingly social. And that's where uh, it's going. And the reason for this, he says, is because of the rise of amateur producers. So anyone can. Uh, be a producer of media today, which has com completely revolu revolutionized uh, the media landscape. There's no longer, um, it's no longer run and controlled by conglomerates. 
and corporations or professional journalists, anyone can put a message out there and anyone can receive it. Uh, Clay Shirky says, our generation has witnessed the largest increase in expressive capability in human history, uh, which is amazing. And so what, what this means is that more information is being exchanged, uh, but often over greater distances. So paradoxically, we are more and less connected to each other. So the problem, um, well, so Zuckerberg, uh, he built a business on recognizing that it's part of the human condition to desire community. So the problem is how, how do we uh, use, how do we restore this to people? Um, he says, we believe that people being able to share the information they wanted and having access to the information they wanted is just a better world. People can connect better w with people around them, understand more of what's going on with the people around them, and understand more in general. Uh, so Facebook believes that by facilitating the flow of information um, and coordinating it amongst people, it can restore uh, community. He talks about this in a couple different interviews I saw. And uh, so they believe that information um, exchanged between people can restore community. Um, Shirky argues that the key to cultivating today's new media landscape is more and more often a way of creating an environment for convening and supporting groups. Uh, so that's exactly what Facebook does. Uh, Zuckerberg actually was majoring in psychology um, before I dropped out. And so I thought that was pretty cool. They don't call themselves a social networking site, it's a social utility. And so he actually believes that it's designed to um, do that. And that's it. <laughs>